Hi everyone, this is Donald from UrbanSketchy.com and I'm, today I'm going to be taking you through a sketch tutorial for an ink and water colour sketch of this little colourful street scene. The reference photo that you can see on the left is available to download if you would like to have a go at sketching this scene yourself. So let's get sketching. So I'm starting off just with a very rough outline in pencil marks on the sketchbook. So I've got a Kurutoga mechanical pencil but you can use any kind of pencil you like. And I'm just very roughly marking out where the outline of the building goes and the windows and doors. And it's really very fast. And then I'm straight in with the ink pens. So for this one, I'm using a Pigma Micron PN drawing pen. And this is a permanent ink. So it's great for when you're going to do watercolor paintings. It's not going to run or smudge. It's locked in permanent onto the page. And you're just roughly kind of marking out where the outlines go, following the pencil marks roughly, but not being too accurate or too worried about it matching up. Um, it's just the pencil marks are really just to make sure that everything's going to fit on the page. And then, as you'll see, I like to do my lines kind of wobbly and wonky. Everything is a bit hodgepodge. I don't think that's the right word, hodgepodge. But yeah, everything's a bit kind of misshapen, if you like, and that's just the way I like to draw. It, one of the beauties about drawing like this is that you don't have to worry too much about perspective, because obviously if every window and door is all wonky and misshapen anyway, then your perspective kind of goes out the window. The sketchbook that I'm using for this sketch is a Pink Pig sketchbook. It's a British sketchbook company and this is a type of paper that's in this. It's called a Melier, which is a quite a smooth watercolour paper. And it's really nice to draw and it's got a slight texture to it, but it is a watercolour paper so it holds watercolour paint really nicely. And the thing I like, I like about Pink Pig books is that they are customizable, so you can have a different cover, uh, choose a color, you can choose your size, and you can also choose the type of paper that goes in it, because they have a rougher kind of paper that can go in it, Bockingford paper that can go inside as well. So as you'll see, I'm just kind of going around, I've done all the tiles there in the central sort of building, and now I'm drawing in all the bricks. And just very simple lines across and then little dashes for the bricks and it's amazing how quickly once you start doing them how quickly it starts to, to look like a wall once you've done lots and lots of little lines and makes it all start to feel a bit three-dimensional sometimes I do sit and draw all the bricks individually but I also quite enjoy the speed of just drawing lines and then little vertical dashes And it is quite effective, particularly once you've put the watercolour paint on. I like this pen because you can hold it like a normal writing pen. It was, it's not the fine liner pens that Pigma Micron or Uni or other makes make. If you like, it's, it's a really nice pen to draw with um, because you can hold it at, an, at a normal angle like a writing pen. It's got a slight flexible tip as well so you can get nice wonky lines out of it. So just drawing in more tiles and then start on the brickwork of the main part of that central building. I kind of swithered about whether to just leave the central building blank but I did decide well there are bricks all over it so I'm going to draw in bricks on all the buildings. I quite liked the effect at the end. I wasn't sure as, about, as I was going along whether I'd overdone it, but I thought it worked out okay in the end.
do quite enjoy this about sketching as you can just get carried away drawing bricks you can sit for hours just drawing in tiny details of all the brick lines and stuff and you get lost in your own thoughts just drifting away in your own little world drawing bricks i'm sure we've all been there you can just be sat doing this and there's not, not a care in the world there's not a thought in your mind it's quite an enjoyable way to spend your time So as I say, I just kept drawing bricks, thinking I've gone too far. This is far too many. <laughs> Sometimes you do that, you just get carried away. So yeah, I'm starting to get quite happy with it at this stage. Once I'd drawn in all the bricks and wobbly detail, I thought I'm going to keep going with this, so I, then I started drawing in the cobbles of the street and I thought well I've definitely gone too far now, but that always seems to be the way with me, I keep going, drawing until I've drawn too much detail, but actually I thought it turned out quite well with all the cobbles and so on, they look quite effective in the final sketch. Yeah, as I say, this sketchbook is good because it's got a nice balance of smoothness and a bit of texture to it, so you can draw on it nicely, but it also holds the watercolour. I'm now just dropping out all the pencil marks, which you can barely see now anyway, but um, just to get rid of any that are still visible. This is our putty eraser that I'm using. And then on with the watercolours. One little good tip is that little glass jar that I use um, I put water in it. I think these jars are used for cosmetics or something, but they're really handy for watercolour paint, especially if you're going out painting on location. You can take these, they are they do seal quite nicely. I could probably still put them in a in a plastic bag just to make sure, but they do seal nicely on their small pocket size, which is great. So the first layer of watercolour paint, I'm using Royal Tannins Van Gogh watercolours for this sketch. It's a really nice, vibrant paint set. The first colour, the yellow colour I'm using is called Gamboge, or Gamboge, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that's it, just a very quick wash. And as you can see, all the ink lines are visible through it because it's a permanent ink. It's not going to smudge or blot away. And then in with the roof, tiles now I decided to use a uh, burnt sienna it's such a nice color and I like as it dries you get this slight variation in tone whereas I a lot of the time I like to use marker pens and um, you really only get one color tone whereas watercolor one of the great benefits is you're going to get lots of different tones as the paint dries at different times and then I went in with a nice vibrant cerulean blue I think this shows you how vibrant these paints are, they're really good and they're not professional paints, they're described as kind of a cross between student and professional watercolours but I really find them, they're as good as any professional, so-called professional paints. If you've never tried these watercolours I would suggest you give them a go because they're actually not that expensive. Um, I've got a tray of 48, which I don't think is actually available anymore, but um, you do get a tray of 36. Um, the reason I like to use have a tray with lots of colours is that I don't tend to mix colours too much. I just like to use it straight from the palette so you get the purest, most vibrant colours straight out without having to faff too much with, with mi colour mixing, which I think just slows the process up. I prefer it just be as quick as I can with watercolour. And so now I went in with the last colour, which is an oxide red, which is a nice kind of terracotta. Yeah, I think that was a burnt umber that I used for that.
and then for the cobbles I went in with a really nice shade that this set has it's called dusk yellow and it's got a kind of granular texture to it which I really like I went back in with the blue because I realised I'd missed the window but it was also painted blue As you can see, this is really straightforward. Anybody could do this. It's really not complicated. Probably takes a while, I guess, but it's not difficult. And now I move on to the marker pen stage that I like to do. Most of the time I actually do entire sketches in marker pens. But when I do watercolour, I do also like to add in lots of contrasty detail using the markers. So. These are my favourite type of markers, these are Faber-Castell soft brush grey shades marker pens and these are permanent, waterproof and light fast so they're brilliant for drawing over watercolour paint, they're not going to get lost in the paint and they're not going to smudge the paint or react with it in strange ways. So I'm just going to draw, draw in lots of layers of ink start to see the by removing the white and adding in the grey it starts to make it more contrasty and you can choose the highlight sections and so now this is one of my signatures is that any kind of pavement edges or sidewalk edges I guess you would call it if you're in America I like to colour them in in different shades of grey and white even though that's not what it's like in reality just adds a nice kind of fun effect and then I decided I usually do windows in a dark grey shade but because I'm using watercolour paper it's not quite as bright white as the pads that I usually use I usually draw on bristle board which is very bright white but for watercolour paper it's got a slightly more off-white shade to it so I tend to go a bit darker on the shades so I went in with my trusty giant black ink Faber-Castell marker. This is just pure black. It's a brilliant marker to draw with. Uh, I actually tried to do a night scene once and I coloured in the entire sky black. Wouldn't recommend it. It does use an enormous amount of ink when you do that. But it is a brilliant pen because you can sketch over large areas and it's not going to go streaky. It's a very smooth pen because it's so black. And then just going in with some cold grey 3 shades to finish off. Now unfortunately there was a little glitch with the camera so I didn't get to record the last few moments but as you can see all I've done after that section is I've added in with the cold grey 3 marker I've added in a few details on the bricks and I went over the drain pipe again just to make that stand out and then added in a few grey dots on the cobbles just to make that those stand out as well and add a bit more tonal variation but otherwise everything you saw up to that point was recorded luckily the perils of technology I guess but I think the adding in the final little details of contrast to the bricks does help it's not exactly what it looked like in the photograph but um, I thought it needed to just a bit more punch and contrast and that's the final result Thank you so much for watching if you've made it to the end of this video. It's a fairly new channel so I'm trying to build it up. If you know anybody who is into urban sketching do point them this way. And you can also head over to my website if you would like to see more of my sketches and other urban sketchy goodness at urbansketchy.com.